Hi everyone, I'm Stan from Eagle Vision. I'm here again with Jade. Jade, welcome. Thank you, Stan. So we're talking about custom design and we've talked about how Jade takes a concept and then evolves it further. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how we actually get to delivering the dream. So some of the technical documentation slash working drawings. Um, so Jade, you've basically designed a museum in a way. Yeah. How do you deliver that dream? What needs to happen next? So designing museums or galleries, um, mm. if you like, um, for collectors is very passionate because we're talking to the individual. We're not talking to um, a board of directors and some accountants about how we're going to deliver a commercial project yeah. to give them a commercial reality. We're talking about getting every little detail right because what is important to the collector is knowing that the continuity between the design works just like the layout of a dashboard of a beautiful car mm. um, you don't want incongruity there um, yeah. and so lots of documentation lots of drawings um, specifying everything specifying which rotation the rotation of the heads of screws so that we right. know that they're they're vertical or they're at 45 degrees. And if we've got a bench edge and we've got 185 screws there and they've got a little tanning clip and you see the hex head, mm. what angle are they all at? They um, that up. sort of detail is where yeah. we go to if that's where I feel the client wants that level of detail. Mm. Um, so documentation is very important. Going to the plan local planning authority, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in Bahrain, whether it's in UK or whether it's in Germany. Yeah. We have projects everywhere at the moment. Yeah. Um, they're all different. We cannot just create a set of, I, I cannot set, create a set of guidelines and uh, beyond um, assess who those local authorities are that we talk to. Sure. So we've got our authorities out of the way, then we have to find the right fabricators, builders and artisans. Mm, mm. This is not, to a large extent, a building is going to be a building. Right. Um, and to, for a large portion of that project, the local builders are going to be fine. Uh, but it's then where we get down to the fit out and to the finer detail. For instance, if um, one project doing an, I'm doing in Oxfordshire at the moment, the stonework has to match. Right. It's no point buying imported stone mm. to then blend with a hut and, and be harmonious with the 17th century farmhouse that we're matching it to. Right. So cut and that's right. That kind of and it's got to be locally quarried. So right. we've gone back to the original quarry. Mm. Uh, we've got the uh, the stone for the walls and we've got the slates, Welsh slates for the roof. Right. Uh, that sort of continuity is absolutely vital. Mm. From a uh, admin point of view for planning authorities as well as for the harmony of the site and of the client. Yeah. You're really continuing the heritage of the existing space. Yes. Yeah. And blending that new space into That's it. That's right. Yeah. So then there'll be the clients who want to have a thoroughly uh, modern extension to a historical site. Mm -hmm. Sometimes no, I don't works want to put out. that in. <laughs> sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So having the modern extension to the site can work in some instances. Right. Um, and so we most really of the time talk it to probably the. Won't. No, we, we, I want to do things that are sympathetic to this yeah, site. Um, yeah, exactly. re respecting the site um, and building something that fits rather than and, and creates harmony as opposed mm. to the harsh juxtaposition of something else plonk. of the wrong style in that right. location yeah. um, uh, is going to can work um, in almost all instances. So once we've got that and we've located the, the, the right craftsmen, uh, the right, uh, and tradesmen. Um, then, um, and we've got all of our planning uh, approved and we start to construct. Um, the construction process, I'll be there, where, where, wherever it is around the world, I'll be there on, on, on spasmodic or regular visits to yep. make sure that things are being constructed um, in right accordance way. with the design guidelines. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that documentation is really important. How about joinery? Do you get into the design of the... Oh, everything. Community? Yes. Right. So everything will be, I will design everything for the project. The joinery, uh, the furniture such as this, this is one of the pieces uh, that we're sitting against at the moment, mm. um, uh, as well as custom making handles. 
um, mm. if we want to make sure that the handles are right and there's nothing available on the market. Now we We're don't necessarily. The... That's right. <laughs> that's right. We don't necessarily need to spend money for the sake of spending money. Right. If there's something available, or we can find an artist um, that can contribute to the mm. project. I'll, I'll approach that artist and say, let's let's make something that's mm. really special and unique for this. And it could be a range of, of, of bronze handles to suit the joinery. Yeah. Um, joinery sake, um, everything is done uh, in-house while design, um, all of the joinery, uh, the doors, the first fix, the second fix, we make, we'll make custom doors if that's what's appropriate for the project. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. mm. Um, how about some of the mistakes? Have you seen anything like that made in this part? Oh, look. That really stands out? Yeah, look, the quality control is vital. Uh -huh. um, okay. To bring the craftspeople up um, and the tradespeople up to the standard that is expected by the client and also of myself mm. um, to make sure that the finished product delivered is beyond normal, yeah. beyond the standard. It is up to a very high standard. Most of the people we work with um, are quite talented and they have those skills there. Mm. But in the most, the majority of cases, they're being pushed to build to a budget. Right. Uh, and so they have to be in and out quickly. So I'll have conversations with carpenters, joiners, um, upholsterers mm. um, and they're a bit anxious to start with but by the time the project's finished there's a there is celebration because they've had a chance to to do what they've been trained to do yeah. and we just work well yeah we work so well you're together. educating the tradespeople essentially how the ultimate vision is going to look um, I'd, I'd like to be careful about saying educating tradesmen yeah. because I'll, I'll get a punch up the conk uh, <laughs> next time I'm on site. Um, more so showing them that, yes, we can do this. We have the budget, we have the time to get this right. So let's utilize your skills and push, we'll, push, we'll all push ourselves. Mm. I push myself from a design management point of view. Yeah. They push themselves from a construction fabrication point of view. Yeah. Um, but because you know, being a passion project, it's a bit different to just designing to a budget. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, so there will be some aspects that will go to standard mm. specification, um, but where it counts, yeah. that's what the things that you see, uh, the way that things function, the way that they operate, mm. um, have to be right. Even on the inside, um, right. we don't uh, fully restored. Concor winning car at Pebble Beach, it looks as good inside the wheel hub as it does on the outside of the wheel hub. Yeah. Um, it's not superficial restoration work and we don't do superficial construction work. Yeah, well, everything has to flow. Yes. Look, that's all that we sort of wanted to cover in this Delivering the Dream uh, episode. Next time around, we'll see what actually happens then afterwards at the completion of the project. Thanks so much for watching. See you again.